step into the world of The Sopranos where loyalty is tested and lives hang in the balance. Brace yourself as we explore the moments that shattered expectations and left fans reeling with disbelief. Dive deep into the rankings of these shocking deaths. But can you predict which one will top the list? Get ready to relive the drama, the suspense, and the moments that left us speechless. In the twisted world of The Sopranos, where every dinner could end in disaster and every tip could tip the scales of life and death, poor Raul found himself serving more than just spaghetti and meatballs. He served his final moments on a platter of mobster egos and unchecked violence. Raul wasn't just any waiter. He was the unwitting star of a tragic drama scripted by the likes of Christopher and Polly. You left me $16, sir. Perhaps you miscounted. There's 1,200 bucks. Where even a simple tip dispute could escalate into a bloody spectacle. Innocent and detached from the underworld machinations, Raul was just trying to make ends meet, not realizing he was about to meet his end. As the tension simmered over a measly tip, Raul became the unwilling pawn in a game of mobster madness. The clash between his humble service and their inflated pride turned deadly. Oh, oh! The aftermath of Raul's murder painted a grim picture of moral bankruptcy. Christopher and Polly, devoid of remorse, cared only about covering their tracks, treating Raul's death as a mere inconvenience in their criminal escapades. It was a chilling display of how violence and criminality can strip away the very essence of humanity. But beyond the blood-soaked tablecloth lies a deeper reflection on power, morality, and the ripple effects of violence. Raul's death serves as a haunting reminder of the collateral damage wrought by organized crime. <laughs> 1184, oh babe. J.T. Dolan's descent into the abyss of mob madness is like watching a Shakespearean tragedy unfold on the gritty streets of New Jersey. Picture this, a guy with a knack for words, a love for movies, and an unfortunate penchant for gambling crosses paths with the charming yet deadly Christopher Moltisanti. It's a match made in, well, not heaven, that's for sure. Dolan, with his dreams of Hollywood stardom, couldn't resist Christopher's magnetic pull into the underworld. You hear this, dude? 100% well, he's a bad boy, huh? With that lingo. But little did he know, he was stepping into a viper's den disguised as a movie set. His vulnerabilities, laid bare by his addiction and dreams, became ammunition for Christopher's manipulation arsenal. From debts to threats, Christopher knew how to play the game, and Dolan was just another pawn in his twisted chessboard. Despite attempts to break free from the clutches of Christopher and his cronies, Dolan found himself sinking deeper into the quicksand of mob life. I'm 100% well. I deliver this script. Are you nothing? That scene in season six, episode 17, where he finally stands up to Christopher, is like a crescendo in a symphony of despair. You can almost feel the tension crackling in the air as Dolan realizes the noose tightening around his neck, both metaphorically and, well, not so metaphorically. Chris, you're in the mafia. His fate, sealed by his own courage or perhaps naivety, serves as a neon warning sign in the dark alleyways of organized crime. In a world where loyalty is enforced with brass knuckles and honesty gets you a one-way ticket to a shallow grave, Dolan's story is a cautionary tale worth its weight in gold. Or should we say, blood-soaked bills. But what's truly chilling is Christopher's icy indifference towards Dolan's demise. It's as if he's flicking away a pesky fly, oblivious to the life he's just squashed. In this world of power-hungry predators, friendship is just another commodity to be traded in for a higher stake. I'm positive we'll think of something. Tracy's saga unfolded like a merciless tango with destiny. Ensnared in the clutches of the odious Ralph Cifaretto, her existence plunged into a murky abyss of mistreatment and neglect. Scarred by a harrowing past, she sought refuge in Tony, who, in his own convoluted manner, viewed her as a wayward soul in need of redemption. Yet, Tracy's tribulations were far from reaching their conclusion. With a child on the horizon and a heart heavy with dashed hopes, she confronted Ralph with trembling anticipation. <laughs> yeah, right. What man? Oh, a double. Oh. Only to be met with the callousness of a man devoid of compassion. His professed affection warped into a cruel mockery, leaving her shattered and forsaken. This way she can grow up to be a cocksucking slob, just like a mother. In a flicker of defiance, Tracy dared to strike back, 
but her rebellion was met with a tempest of savagery. Ralph's fists morphed into instruments of demise, pulverizing her delicate existence in a tempest of brutality. Tracy's tragic demise etched a scar on the soul of the Sopranos cosmos. She transcended being merely a casualty of the streets. She symbolized innocence crushed beneath the heel of corruption. In her demise, we behold the genuine visage of the mob, not as glamorous renegades, but as soulless predators. Holy f***ing shit. In the heart of Jersey's gritty underworld, amidst the smoke-filled rooms and shadowy deals, there stood Billy, a stalwart companion to the infamous Phil Leotardo. Born under the September skies of 1960, Billy wasn't just a partner in crime. He was a brother in arms, a steadfast presence in Phil's tumultuous life. While Phil was behind bars, it was Billy who stepped up, looking after Phil's kin and keeping the flames of loyalty burning bright. But when Carmine Lupertasi Sr. breathed his last, the winds of change swept through the underworld. Phil and Billy found themselves standing shoulder to shoulder with Johnny Sacrimony, navigating the treacherous waters of power and allegiance. Yet fate can be as cruel as a bullet in the night. Billy's own demise came at the hands of Tony Blundetto, a twist of fate that shattered Phil's world. Anybody ever die in your arms, you cocksucker? A family member, somebody you love? The loss of his kid brother ignited a firestorm of vengeance within Phil, a burning desire to avenge Billy's untimely end. And so, the hunt began, a relentless pursuit of justice or perhaps retribution. Lines were drawn, alliances tested, and the fragile peace between the New Jersey and New York families teetered on the brink of collapse. In the end, Billy's tragic death left a lasting impact, because come on, he was just a f***ing kid in his 50s. 47. He was a f***ing kid. In the vast tapestry of The Sopranos, there exists a haunting narrative that grips fans with the force of a vengeful specter lurking in the shadows. It's the poignant odyssey of Adriana, ensnared in the tangled threads of organized crime, her path ultimately leading to the most heart-rending of conclusions. Born into the lineage of Richie and Jackie April, Adriana danced perilously close to the flames of the underworld. She didn't merely tread lightly, she embraced the danger with an audacious waltz, captivated by the seductive promises of wealth and authority that the mob life dangled before her. And when she fell for Christopher Moltisanti, she didn't just fall. She plunged headfirst into a whirlwind of romance and peril, seeing it as her ticket to the high life. The moment Christopher bestowed upon her the keys to a nightclub, Adriana's eyes sparkled with the excitement of a child on Christmas morning. Finally, she had claimed her stake, her own piece of the extravagant dream she had long pursued. But alas, fate, with its penchant for cruel irony, had a different script in mind. The FBI, in their relentless pursuit of Tony Soprano, ensnared Adriana in their web of intrigue. Enter Agent Deborah Sicarone, weaving a tapestry of deception around Adriana with the finesse of a snake with fur in the Garden of Eden. These are snakes with fur. The old Italians will tell you. Adriana spilled her secrets like a shaken soda can, oblivious to the trap tightening around her. When Christopher's gaze strayed to Deborah, Adriana's world crumbled like a fragile house of cards. Faced with the dire choice between betrayal and incarceration, Adriana, clinging to a glimmer of hope, chose the former. Yet, as the cruel axiom of Tony Soprano's world dictates, hope is but a perilous illusion. The walls inexorably closed in, suffocating her beneath the weight of her own missteps. Though the prospect of witness protection beckoned like a tantalizing mirage, Adriana knew deep down that there was no escape from her fate. When she bared her soul to Christopher, seeking solace and absolution, she found instead a dagger of betrayal. Tony's decree, akin to a divine judgment, sealed her doom. In a cruel twist of fate, Silvio escorted her to her final resting place amidst the desolate heart of the woods. Season 5, Episode 12, Long-Term Parking, marked the poignant culmination of Adriana's journey, a tragic aria within the operatic saga of The Sopranos. Please don't make me do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Let's take a trip down memory lane to revisit the roller coaster ride of emotions surrounding the friend of ours, Sal Bon Pansiero. Now, Big Pussy wasn't just your run-of-the-mill mobster. He was as loyal as they come not only to Tony Soprano, but also to Tony's father, the legendary Johnny Boy. With his jovial demeanor and larger-than-life presence, he was the heart and soul of the crew, a true family man with a penchant for living life on the edge. But oh, did he have a weakness? 
His undying love for his wife and kids drove him to tread some treacherous waters. You see, in a bid to provide for his family and style, he dabbled in the risky business of selling H, much to the chagrin of his wise counsel, Jackie April Sinter predictably, things went south faster than you can say forget about it. And Sal found himself in the cold embrace of the law, facing a hefty sentence behind bars. Now, faced with the prospect of spending his golden years in a dingy cell, our dear friend did the unthinkable. He flipped, becoming an informant for the FBI. But it wasn't an easy decision. He grappled with guilt and conflicting loyalties, feeding the feds just enough to keep himself afloat in the murky waters of organized crime. Meanwhile, back in the Soprano camp, suspicions were brewing. Rumors of a rat in their midst sent shockwaves through the crew, but Tony, ever the shrewd leader, refused to act without concrete evidence. When another unlucky soul found themselves under the spotlight, Sal breathed a sigh of relief. But his reprieve was short-lived. As tensions reached a boiling point, Tony's intuition kicked into overdrive. Guided by a haunting dream, he orchestrated a clandestine search of Sal's domain, unearthing damning evidence of betrayal, a wire hidden in plain sight. And so, the stage was set for a gut-wrenching confrontation on the high seas. In a heart-wrenching climax befitting of the Sopranos' trademark drama, Tony, along with his trusted cohorts Polly and Silvio, confronted their once-beloved comrade aboard a desolate boat. Amidst the crashing waves and the deafening silence of betrayal, truths were laid bare, and allegiances shattered like fragile glass. And then, with a heavy heart and a steady hand, Tony pulled the trigger, the echoes of gunfire signaling the end of an era. Sal, the lovable rogue with a heart of gold, met his untimely demise, plunging us into a maelstrom of shock and sorrow. Bobby Bacala, the unsung hero of The Sopranos, stood out amidst the chaos of organized crime like a lone soprano in a cacophony of baritones. His robust frame and gentle soul made him an anomaly in a world where brutality reigned supreme. Despite the constant jabs about his weight and easy demeanor, Bobby remained steadfastly loyal, first to Junior Soprano and later to the formidable Tony Soprano himself, seamlessly transitioning into Tony's inner circle. Born into the unforgiving folds of this clandestine lifestyle, Bobby initially veered away from the bloodshed that stained the hands of his father, opting instead to thrive as a shrewd loan shark. You don't got an envelope? Unlike his counterparts, he shunned the extravagant trappings of mob life, eschewing mistresses and high-speed pursuits for a simpler existence. However, fate dealt Bobby a tumultuous hand when he found himself entwined with Janice, Tony's tempestuous sister, following the tragic demise of his beloved wife, Karen. Their union thrust him into the center of Soprano family drama, culminating in a showdown where Bobby, much to everyone's surprise, emerged victorious in a brawl with Tony, defending Janice's honor. What about my wife? You married her. She's my home. No more talking like that. But as tensions reached a fever pitch within the ranks, Bobby's life took a harrowing turn. Marked for death amidst Phil Leotardo's vendetta against Tony, Bobby met his demise in a most unexpected setting. A model railroad store, the antithesis of the grandiose settings typical of mob hits. With Bobby's untimely demise, we were left to ponder the cruel hand of fate that had guided this gentle giant into the maelstrom of organized crime, lamenting the loss of a man who might have pursued a vastly different path had destiny not intervened. But in the end, Quasimodo predicted all this. You know, Quasimodo predicted all this. Enter Vito Spadafore the enigmatic figure in the colorful tapestry of the Sopranos universe. With a moral compass that swung like a pendulum, Vito embodied the complex dichotomy of loyalty and hidden desires. Fing di Trollio, my arch nemesis. As one of Tony's trusted moneymakers, Vito juggled the demands of family life with the ruthless obligations of a mobster, all while concealing a profound secret. What are you doing? Nothing. I was here. It's, it's a joke. Behind closed doors, Vito's clandestine rendezvous in gay bars painted a stark contrast to his outward persona. The revelation of his true self sent shockwaves through the underworld. You're a f***ing disgrace. <laughs> With whispers of judgment and disdain echoing through the ranks. Yet, amidst the turmoil, Tony's indifference stood as a beacon of acceptance in a sea of intolerance. But where Tony saw indifference, Phil Leotardo saw red. Fueled by bigotry and familial resentment, Phil's vendetta against Vito ignited a deadly game of cat and mouse. You want compromise? How's this? 
20 years in the can. Forced to flee to the quaint serenity of New Hampshire, Vito found solace in the arms of a newfound love, masquerading as a sports aficionado in a picturesque town. Yet the allure of home and the allure of the underworld proved too potent to resist. With a heavy heart and a longing for the adrenaline rush of mob life, Vito bid farewell to his idyllic escape and returned to the concrete jungle of New Jersey. His homecoming, however, was met with a brutal finale orchestrated by Phil's wrath. In a chilling climax, Vito's demise served as a grim reminder of the unforgiving nature of his world. In the tumultuous world of Tony Soprano's mafia empire, the allure of freedom can be as elusive as a mirage in the desert. Just ask Eugene Ponacorvo, the loyal soldier who found himself at a crossroads when a windfall from a deceased aunt promised an escape from mob life. Eugene, with dollar signs dancing in his eyes, envisioned a blissful retirement in the Florida sun, far away from the shadowy dealings of the New Jersey underworld. Armed with a hefty sum of cash, he attempted to buy his way out of servitude, showering Tony with gifts and sweetening the deal with a taste of the greenbacks. But fate, it seems, had other plans. Unbeknownst to his cohorts, Eugene had been singing a different tune to the FBI, feeding them insider information like a canary in a coal mine. With his hopes pinned on Tony's approval, Eugene found himself caught between loyalty and self-preservation. Despite his efforts, Tony's loyalty to the family prevailed. You took an oath, Sill reminded Eugene, dashing his dreams of freedom with a single sentence. As tensions simmered and desperation mounted, Eugene's wife, furious at the dashed hopes of a new life, only added fuel to the fire. In a chilling turn of events, Eugene's basement became the stage for a tragic finale as he took his own life, leaving behind a haunting reminder of the harsh realities of mob life. In the realm of The Sopranos lore, the demise of Tony Blundetto, affectionately known as This Animal Blundetto, struck the fans like a thunderbolt from the Jersey skies. He wasn't just another wise guy, he was blood, cousin to the big boss Tony Soprano himself. Growing up, they were thick as thieves quite literally. After a stint behind bars, Tony had an epiphany or so he claimed. He wanted to trade in the gun for a massage table, shocking everyone with his newfound career aspirations. But we all know old habits die hard in the land of olive oil and marinara sauce. For a hot minute, he resisted the call of the streets, even turning down his cousin's tempting offer to join the family business. But fate, it seems, had other plans. When a shady deal turned sour, Blundetto found himself slipping back into the familiar embrace of crime. Desperate to climb the ladder of respect, he made a fatal decision, taking a hit job on Joey Peeps. Denials fell on deaf ears as the dominoes of retribution began to topple. Tony Soprano left to his own device. He's never going to give up that f***ing animal Blundetto. Before long, blood was spilled, debts were owed, and Tony found himself staring down the barrel of his own demise. Despite Tony Soprano's familial loyalty and guilt-ridden conscience, the harsh reality of mob justice could not be ignored. Confronted with the looming threat of a full-scale war, Tony had to make a choice. With a heavy heart and a calculated hand, he silenced his cousin's troubled existence, sparing him the torture of Phil's wrath. Johnny Sack, the towering figure of the Lupertazzi crime family, strutted through the underworld with the finesse of a don in bespoke suits. His dynamic with Tony Soprano was a delicate dance between mutual respect and simmering tensions. Their relationship teetered on a tightrope, threatened by insults as sharp as a stiletto. Remember when Ralphie's ill-conceived fat joke nearly ignited a turf war? Ah, the drama. But that was just the prelude to the symphony of chaos that followed when Tony Blundetto's actions set off a chain reaction of bloodshed and betrayal, leaving Johnny Sack seething with vengeance. Yet, amidst the turmoil, Johnny faced an even greater adversary, the long arm of the law. The FBI's relentless pursuit turned his once mighty empire into a house of cards, forcing him to confront the stark reality of his mortality. In a bold move that sent shockwaves through the underworld, Johnny chose to admit the existence of this thing of ours. You don't ever admit the existence of this thing, ever. He should have stood trial like a man. A decision as audacious as it was desperate. Despite his hopes of a reprieve, Johnny found himself shackled by the chains of illness, his lungs ravaged by years of smoke and secrecy. His demise, not on the streets where legends are born, but in the sterile confines of a prison hospital served as a stark reminder of the fragility of power and that nicotine is an addictive substance. Nicotine's an addictive substance! Meet Jackie Jr., the epitome of misguided ambition in the world of mobsters. 
You see, Jackie was the living proof that in the world of The Sopranos, intelligence wasn't necessarily a hereditary trait. Born into the Aprily family with a dad who was a revered mob boss, one would think he'd inherit some smarts. But alas, Jackie Jr. was the black sheep of the family, the one who couldn't tell the difference between a gun and a cannoli. Despite his father's hopes for him to pursue a legit path through college, Jackie couldn't resist the allure of the mob life, especially after his uncle Richie came back from the slammer. It seemed like he had more bricks in his head than on the construction sites his family owned. Things took a turn when his mother got involved with the despicable Ralph the Gladiator. Jackie Jr. found himself knee-deep in the drug trade, a far cry from the respectable path his father envisioned. Out of respect to my father. And to make matters worse, he tangled himself up with Tony Soprano's daughter, Meadow. But just when you thought Jackie might straighten up, he decided to put together a gang of misfits even dimmer than himself to pull off a heist straight out of a comic book. Inspired by the antics of his dad and Tony in their youth, Jackie orchestrated a robbery at a card game, which predictably went sideways faster than a getaway car. In a classic Sopranos twist, Jackie found himself on the wrong end of a barrel, courtesy of Tony's man, Vito Spatafore. Tony, ever the master of deception, spun the narrative to blame it on some unsuspecting black dealers. And thus, the tale of Jackie Jr., the not-so-bright spark in the dark world of The Sopranos, came to a fittingly tragic end. It's a lesson in what happens when you mix ambition with a lack of brains, served with a side of family drama and a generous helping of mobster mayhem. You gotta help me. Talk to your stepfather. Let him help. I can't talk to him. So you all know Christopher Moltisanti, right? The nephew who's more like a cousin to Tony Soprano? He's the guy who's always in the thick of things, whether it's disposing of bodies or battling his demons with H and booze. Christopher's like the Soprano's Swiss army knife, always handy for dirty work, but with a blade that's prone to getting dull with addiction. But let's cut to the chase of what led to his ultimate demise, a scene straight out of a mobster's nightmare. Christopher, high as a kite, behind the wheel, with Tony sitting next to him. They're cruising down the highway, but Christopher's mind is in the clouds. Next thing you know, they're swerving, flipping, and crashing into a ditch. Now here's where things take a dark turn. Christopher's coughing up blood, begging Tony for help like a wounded animal. But Tony, he's not seeing his loyal soldier anymore. He's seeing a liability. When he spots that baby seat smashed by a branch, it's like a wake-up call. Christopher's a walking disaster waiting to happen, especially with those feds sniffing around. So does Tony lend a helping hand to his troubled nephew? Nah. He does what any mob boss would do. He takes matters into his own hands. Pinching Christopher's nose shut, Tony sends him off to sleep with the fishes, right there in the wrecked car. And just like that, another life snuffed out in the shadowy world of The Sopranos. But hey, that's the thing about this show. Even the big shots aren't safe from the Grim Reaper's grip. It's a reminder that in the Mafia game, death's always just around the corner, whether you're a made man or not. If you're as intrigued as we are by the blurred lines between fiction and reality in the mob world, then you won't want to miss our full video on the Sopranos actors turned criminals in real life. Hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and drop your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, stay wise and don't forget to hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching.